What would you even do with this much balcony? We could play soccer. Look at that butthole couch! The ball sacks got me. That was mm. really good. Oh yeah, we're moving here. <laughs> oh man, I've got literally 25 masks that I'm bringing. Hand sanitizer, bottle, travel, TSA friendly hand sanitizers. I've got disinfectant wipes. I've got freaking mask guards. I've got mask cases. Did you know you need a mask case? Because what's the point? What's the point if you're gonna take off your mask for two seconds and then you're gonna just let that inside of the mask touch some nasty surfaces? You gotta put it into a case. I got all of that. I got some travel stuff and I'm really nervous. First of all, I don't like traveling. I really don't like traveling a lot. Um, there's something about airplanes. I get really nervous. Imagine a metal sphere just like flying in the air. In a your metal sphere? A metal, yeah, a metal awesome. sphere. A metal like a bullet looking thing just like flying in the air. Good morning, my love. Welcome back to today's vlog. So today we're actually packing because we're gonna go head out to a city that uh, we've been thinking about moving to for quite some time. And the reason that we're doing this in the middle of COVID is because we don't know when COVID's gonna be over. We've actually haven't gone out. We have not gone to parties. We have not gone out to eat. We have not gone out to social gatherings. We've been relatively really good about COVID, like really really good. But we just felt like this seemed like a pertinent to life issue that we needed to face. And we're gonna do it as safely as possible. So we've got all of these things ready to go. And I'm gonna pack all of my little anxious struggles into this little bag because we're only visiting that city for like two days and one night. It's gonna be weird. And it's a jam packed two days and a night. But before I get started in packing this suitcase, I'm gonna pack my brain. <laughs> oh, oh, you didn't see that one coming. Did you see that one coming? <laughs> so whenever I go travel, whenever I like to get onto a plane, which is not a lot, whenever I am doing something that requires me to be a little bit more zen, maybe I need to distract myself while I'm walking on the treadmill, whatever it may be, I like to use Audible. You guys know this. I've been talking about Audible for quite some time now, and Audible is amazing. It's like your go-to place for spoken word entertainment. Not only do they have audio books, they have Audible originals, they also have podcasts, they have comedy shows. You can actually go through a guided meditation. I'm gonna need that on the plane. A guided meditation using Audible. And right now, this is news, okay? They came out with an Audible Plus premium plan, which gives you full access to their Plus catalog. I'm talking thousands and thousands of select originals, audiobooks, podcasts, exclusive shows. I mean, they're really all on there. I really like Audible Plus because here's the thing. I feel like when it comes to audiobooks or when it comes to like these different types of spoken word entertainment, it is so hard to pick the next thing that you want to listen to. Like there's just so much. Well, Audible's got you covered because they're actually really good at like recommending based off of what you already enjoyed, what you should listen to next. And right now they're doing their holiday offer. This is going to be the best offer of the year. So for the first six months of Audible Plus, you can actually get it for only $4.95 a month. And don't worry, you're like, oh my God, $4.95 a month now, but what about after the six months? It's going to be $7.95 to download and stream just like thousands of audiobooks, Audible Originals, podcasts, cast everything's chef kisses. Silent Patient is like my favorite thing ever. And a lot of you guys are like, I listened to the audiobook of Silent Patient and it was amazing. The way that they narrate it and I got so intrigued that I actually re-listened to Silent Patient on Audible. Or right now I'm actually listening to something called A Hunting Party. It's a book by, I believe her name is Lucy Foley, if I'm not pronouncing it wrong. And that one's narrated really well. It's about a bunch of friends who go to this like weekend lodge and they get isolated because of a snowstorm and then one of them dies. And it's obvious that one of them has killed one of them. But they're all friends. How does that make sense? So if you guys are interested, visit audible.com slash missmangobutt or text missmangobutt to 500-500. That's audible.com slash missmangobutt or text missmangobutt to 500-500. 500. So thank you Audible for partnering with me on today's video and guiding me with some meditation through my future plane ride that's gonna happen in like six hours. I haven't packed anything. <laughs> so this is the age of traveling with COVID. I've got all of these disinfectant wipes. I've got some face wipe. I've got my own Kleenex. I'm actually debating how many hand sanitizers to bring. I've got like six more bottles. Bring but so all. far, why are you holding it back? Bring more than four. Bring them all. Really? No. Oh. <laughs> what the heck? And now you're gonna see me at the airport.
actually just realized that I vlogged absolutely nothing at the airport and I haven't told you guys what city that we're even in. But first, I really want to show you this hotel room because I've been so excited to stay in this hotel. There's a sink! There's a smoke machine! So this is like the Virgin Hotel, like the Virgin Airlines. And this is like the living room. Everything's so cute. And then this is where we're visiting. Wow, look at that butthole couch! Does that not look like a butthole seat? My throat is sore because I have not been talking for like the past 10 hours. I want to live here. Why is the tub so round? And then in here is the world's biggest what shower. The? So, I know what you're going to say, but um, listen, I have a whole story. I ordered this, but then um, it never came, and then it came afterwards, so um, I'm just going to wear it now. This is my outfit of the day. So I've got this long skirt from Aritzia. It's got naked women on there, so I really want to make a first good impression. And then I've got boat, and then my bag, and my mask, and now we're ready to go. All I did was brush my teeth. I have no makeup on under my mask, by the way. That's how you... Get rid of mask me. That's all I'm gonna say. Bada bing, bada boom. Now you're probably wondering, oh my gosh, is she a time traveler? Like, how did she get from there? Hi, future Stephanie. I realized um, I did nothing. <laughs> I didn't tell you guys where I was. Like, the whole vlog, I'm trying to edit it, and I'm like, wait, they don't even know where I am. Like, they honestly <laughs> don't know what state I'm in. They know nothing, Jon Snow. And so I was like, okay, I probably need to say, what is that? Okay, sorry. Yeah, I guess like right now I should <laughs> while wow, he's moving away from me. That is so rude I realized that I should probably explain to you guys what we're doing this day and like what where we went Why we decided to go there. So right now what you guys just saw we just checked into a hotel in Dun 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 Dwalas 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 Dallas <laughs> Dallas Texas that sounds weird. <laughs> that sounds really I've, weird. I know it sounds really random. Dallas was a place that we were thinking about for like months. If I looked at the United States map and I had to think about, okay, like we're moving out of LA and obviously we're thinking about like cost of living. I kind of kept gravitating towards Dallas, Texas. And I don't know what it is. I've never even been in the state of Texas in my entire life before. I started looking into Dallas, Texas. I started looking into like what they have and apparently they have, well, actually I'm gonna be honest with you because I love Asian food. I, I googled uh, top cities with Asian people and Dallas was one of them. <laughs> so I was like, this is perfect. Match made in heaven. Um, the main reason though, geographically speaking, it's a good spot. So geographically speaking, it's a two hour plane ride from Atlanta, which is where my sister is and my whole family. And it's a one hour time difference. And then it's only two hours from LA. So if I ever have to come to LA for any reason, I mean, I don't really see any reason, but if I had to, but if I wanted to, it's just a two hour plane ride. And it just seemed really central to like everything, like the East and Coast I, and the West Coast. And I have family there. Oh, and he has family there. That was actually our first reason. That was actually the um, main reason. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, it's not like his parents are there. So he has like extended family there. That's a little bit different, okay? Yeah. You make it seem like your mama lives in Dallas, Texas, okay? So he's got extended family in Dallas. And it's just seems like a nice area so we decided to check it out because obviously I'm not cuckoo I'm not gonna go move to Texas if I've never been and we haven't decided yet yeah this is That's um this is place. one of the first couple of cities that were like ticked on our list of like hey if we really wanted to live somewhere anywhere in the United States where would it be mm -hmm. and this was kind of like my top contender I have a couple other that I'm really excited for but anyways we're in Dallas in the vlog. Not right now. I'm home right now. You get it. We were in Dallas for two days and one night and the first day that we were there, you guys are going to see us go check out a bunch of apartments because, well actually just two, because we were thinking maybe we wanted to rent in Dallas and kind of like get a feel of the land first and then the next day actually we went to go check out some really, really pretty houses which like, it kind of blew my mind. <laughs> it blew my, I know everyone who lives outside of LA, they are probably sick of anyone from LA saying the same shit of like, <gasps> in LA? this would be a closet and then everyone in New York is like in New York this would be a shoe closet and then we're just all like taking turns like which place has smaller square footage for the money um, it's weird so they those were really pretty houses so stay tuned for that video because it's gonna blow your it blew my marbles that's all I gotta say so right now we're actually gonna show you guys the first apartment and this is what it looks like so I know that most of you guys probably have like this in your city but I feel like in LA we don't really have like this so I'm I'm just kind of shy. 
check. Okay, that's the leasing office. I'm not gonna show you where we're going the just local, yet. Uh, over there. But so. look at this. It's like a cute little French place to grab coffee. And this is so adorable. Okay, so this is the first unit that we're looking at. And this is the one that I saw online. And this is one of the main reasons I wanted to check this place out. But they've got the laundry room right when you walk in. It's gonna really remind you of our downtown place, but like just mega size. So we've got the whole kitchen here. I guess it's just good for filming because we've got like this. This could be like a massive pantry. So I'm gonna overlook this view. And we put one of the curtains down, so that goes back up, but it's just, just like walls of glass. And then down this way, this is the weirdest room. So I don't even think this would be like a bedroom. It would be like a weird office. Does that not feel weird? It doesn't feel like a residential place. Like there's just turf. Like you look outside and it's just turf. You can't go out there. All of the bathrooms are really big. They've got so much just storage. This reminds me of our shower at home. <laughs> and then a bathtub. So there's three rooms in this one, which is really big. And all of the closets are really big too. So that's a plus. And then this is another second room, which this is not the master, but Look at how pretty that view is. I don't really love the carpeting, but I feel like it's okay. It looks like the nice soft carpeting. It's so bright. This is crazy. And then this is like what the kitchen looks like from this perspective. I guess that's the fridge. I should look at the fridge. So it just, you just press it and it opens. That's cool. I like that. Oops. So this would be the master bathroom. You've got your little separate water closet, a bathtub, a big shower, two vanities. I mean, it's nice. I am thrown off by the carpeting. <laughs> this is the most spacious balcony I've ever seen in my life. What would you even do with this much balcony? We could play soccer. Okay, get out of here. <laughs> so we just saw that first apartment in Dallas. Dallas. I keep wanting to say Dallas. Sorry. Wait, can we talk about Dallas first? Yes. Because I feel like immediately after exiting the hotel, that was like the first place that we went to technically and going from like the parking lot to even the apartment building that we were seeing. First of all, driving in Dallas was actually really difficult. Y'all have a lot of toll roads and stuff and then lots yeah. of interesting turns. We took like, I think five different wrong turns. <laughs> we get to the apartment and I think the first thing that I noticed is that Dallas this downtown Dallas is so clean. So here's the thing with downtown LA. I'm not shitting on LA. I love LA. You guys know that. I, I could tattoo that on my body, but I won't. If you lived in downtown LA or if you've been there, is that when you're walking around, once a couple blocks, you're gonna have like the pungent smell of pee. It's just gonna happen. That's just like what you deal with to live in a beautiful city like LA. You just like smell the pee, you ignore it, you mentally block out the pee. You're like a urine blocker. You're like, nope, not today. And you just pretend like it's not there. But Dallas, like it was really clean. It just, I don't know. I guess that was like the first thing. I don't know if it was like a contrast. I mean, we didn't walk around that much either. Yeah, but, but from what we've seen, it's mm -hmm. really clean. And then yeah. I saw like a bunch of people walking around, which was nice because I wanted something like busy feeling right and so we get to the apartment and there was like a French restaurant downstairs and there was like this little patio and you could get coffee you could get freaking croissant the place is beautiful it's really pretty like honestly I think it was prettier than the pictures on their website their gym but it was massive it was so bright it was like all windows they had like a little patio for yoga and I was like that's so cool they had like this little personal fitness room that you could rent out they had this like pool I'm like, they had the normal I mean, stuff that like every, normal amenities that every <laughs> like, what every apartment has, I'm like, they had a pool. And so, we go up to the unit that we really wanted to see, and it was a three bedroom unit, which I, that's insane for like an apartment that's a lot of rooms. And so I was really excited, we walk in, and the first thing that I'm hit with is just how bright it is. And I was like, this is amazing. I love sunlight, I love brightness, and then the kitchen was actually so big for an apartment, like it just was massive. There was so much storage space. You guys saw that balcony? You the guys balcony was epic. <laughs> yeah, and that living room was so pretty. I like that like column in the corner. I feel like that added a lot of pizzazz, like artsiness. That was all the pluses. And then everything went downhill from there. <laughs> so there's a couple things that I don't like about this apartment. The first main thing would be because of mango is the carpeting. And I know that sounds really weird to be like, oh, my dog doesn't like carpet. Well, I'm scared of carpet because our dogs are, um, they're trained, but they have mistakes. So I'm always scared that they're gonna pee on carpet and like stain the carpet and then our security deposit just like flush it down the toilet. But mainly because mango's skin condition, I feel like carpet holds a lot of bacteria that you can't get out as like, you know, tiles and hardwood, you can just like 
like wipe it with disinfectant and so I'm worried that she's gonna like rub herself on the carpet and her skin's gonna get worse and her skin's really flaky then the flakes get onto the carpet I was thinking about all of that, okay? <laughs> and then like she would probably rub herself on the flakes of the carpet. It was just gonna get nasty. And so the carpets kind of were not the greatest thing ever because of mango. And then I started kind of like opening cabinets. You know, this is something that took me so long to do because I, when we first started renting and like we went through so many apartments, I never did this. I never like opened cabinets, opened drawers. Like I would just open one and be like, oh, that's good space, right? Or open it all, good space. But now you'll see me like full on Korean Ajima, like opening it all, right? And it's because I want to see if these are like cheaply made. And I don't care about if they're cheaply made. But the problem is, the problem is after a year of wear and tear, that cheaply made cabinet is probably going to start to fall apart. And then guess who's going to get charged for it? You, your security deposit. You better believe. <laughs> I've had experience. I've had experience. And so like all of the bathroom cabinets and the kitchen cabinets, after I showed you guys, I went back and I reopened them and it just was not like, just wasn't a sturdy build. It didn't feel strong, like a strong man holding me in an embrace. It just was kind of like- Stephanie opens a lot of cabinets. <laughs> Like think about it, you've got a mug cabinet. How many times a day do you take out a cup? A million times a day. Right. No less. And then the third thing, this is gonna seem really emotional. <laughs> Is that room? There was this one room when it was like grass right outside the room, but it was fake like grass. it was a fake turf and it was like this roof, but not a balcony. But you can't go there. It's like um, what would you call it's that? It's just a little balcony that they put fake grass on. But it's not a balcony that you can visit. Right, you can't go outside. Exactly. But no one can. Okay, does it make it better if you can go outside? Yes. Why? I don't know. Like, there's just so many things that make me uneasy. If I think about it logically, which is impossible because this this whole fear of this room is completely emotional and bonkers, first of all. It's not just weird. It just didn't feel right. It didn't sit with me. I had this really uneasy feeling the minute that I walked into that room. I was like, no. I could already imag imagine myself just crying in the corner, like being terrorized. You know those haunted house movies? This is the exact feeling. Leave it in the comments. Do you think, do you find charm in rooms like that? Or do you think it's just so scary? Other than that, the apartment itself was so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Other than the haunted room that I envisioned dying in, it was pretty. <laughs> so that was the first unit that we went and saw. And then we went to go see a second apartment building. So we're at the second apartment that I was checking out. And they have an art space. Like this is a community. They just don't have an art space. You could just fulfill your little artist dreams. They've got sketchbooks. <gasps> this, they have coloring books. This is amazing. This is the pool of this apartment. I'm already obsessed with this building. It's kind of like an infinity, so that part's like a waterfall, but it's so cute. They also have like an off leash dog park that's so big. So, this is the kitchen or the wine fridge. Yeah, that's pretty nice. This one feels like downtown LA. Oh, that's weird. How is this? It's really pretty. I like it. Storage. Lots of storage. There's three bedrooms and a deck. Look at that label. It's like a ball sack. We're moving I was going to say like teardrop, but... Oh, I like this. this. Whoa. Oh, this is the mask. Oh. Oh, I see. I really like this. Oh, there's dual sinks. More ball sacks. The ball sacks got me, honestly. That's why I think I like this unit better. If the first place had ball sacks, I'd move in. <laughs> this one really reminded me of our last place, just a bajillion times bigger. <laughs> first of all, the apartment itself. This was probably the most well-appointed apartment building I have ever walked through. Like they had an art- Well-appointed. Art... Well-appointed. You like that real estate term? Mm. They had like an art studio that you could rent and they had all these art supplies, like craft supplies, a sink to wash your paintbrushes. They had two doggy stations that they were going to put in that you are could you wash a, your dog. Are you a freaking Asian? <laughs> uh-huh. Can we talk about the, the windows? <laughs> While we drove from the second apartment all the way back to the hotel, now mind you, we took about like 10 wrong turns. So this was a very long rant that he gave me in the car. Okay, I'm gonna show it to you right here. The boop, it's a little V-shaped window. So this like building is curved. I, mean, I think everybody, that's the only thing everybody was looking at. Yeah, it's a very, I think it's so 
pretty. I think it adds pizzazz. I think it adds character. I think it adds personality. I think a little bit of spice. I like it too, personally. Okay. I think it's very weird. It's quirky, like yeah. you. Nine out of ten people would think it's the most hideous <laughs> thing they've ever seen. <laughs> And then afterwards, we decided to go visit some of like the hot spots in Dallas. We went to this place called Highland Park Village. It's supposed to be like this really cute shopping area with lots of restaurants. I don't know why there's like so many pockets of just like, I just zoomed Pretty in right? on that man's butt. <laughs> That's a ginormous um, freaking, what do you call it, anthropology. And then I think this way they've got like some fancy stores. The structures of these buildings are so pretty. Like look at how cute these little tiles are. I do I feel like I'm in Disneyland. Of, like all of these little cute areas, these buildings are so cute. I don't even know what to say. So it all started with this comment. I know you can't see it, but it says Valerie Sotomayor. Thank you, Bates. She said, this is why I love Texas pecan pie all year round. So I told my fiance this, like probably the minute that we landed, I was like, oh yeah, by the way, they probably have pecan pie because they have it all year long. So my fiance has then decided to post made a pecan pie to the hotel room. Oh, oh my god. god. Oh my god, this baby was over $10. This was over $10? Yes. You don't even have a fork. Honey, you don't need a fork Wait, when you see I a deep. Wait, I want to try a bite. Look, oh. Let me try Oh my bite. god. Oh my god. Look at this. This okay. is not okay. Let me okay. try this Texas. Oh my god, it's really good. Mmm. Mmm. That's really good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're moving here. No. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect. You're perfect. It's supposed to be this way. I think the pecan pie needs to be made this way. <laughs> He's about to obliterate this. It's like 10 p.m. I can't <laughs> even believe that there's a pecan shop that's like open. There's so like, many shops open. <laughs> that are like, here, I sell pecan pies so until midnight. Like, how is that even a thing? That pecan pie. How do you feel about the first night in Dallas? How do you feel about the pecan pie? He finished the whole pecan pie. The pecan pie is life changing. It's he said it was the best pecan pie he's ever had in his life and he would move to Texas just for that pecan pie. I don't pie. even remember where I ordered from. Honey. I literally just type in pecan pie and I order from the first stop. First so you place. didn't even like go through Yelp and look for like the best pie no. shop? So no. imagine if you look up the best pie shop. Oh. Is Dallas the South? Or is it the North? Ooh. Or is it the Tuala Tuala Dallas? So that was pretty much our first night in Dallas. We just went to those two apartments. We did actually scope out like the areas. We tried to like drive through a Target. Not through it, but like drive by it. But also not a drive by. We went to Target and we checked out their H Mart. Their Korean scene was kind of popping. They had a lot of Korean restaurants. They had a lot of Chinese restaurants. I a mean, we already- A lot of Korean yeah. restaurants than I thought. Yeah, and we kind of researched it before going because we knew food is so important to us. We love food and we needed a lot of Asian food because I can't cook it for Shit. And so we went there and it was actually more than we even researched. We were like, yeah. wow, this is a lot. And all, everyone we talked to in Dallas was like, the restaurant scene in Dallas is insane. <laughs> like there's so many restaurants. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I went on Yelp. There's so many restaurants in the area. It was kind of mind blowing. And so it was kind of a chill night. I was getting ready for the next day. And overall the first day, I would say that I really, I liked it, Dallas. It's a different vibe than what I was expecting though, but I really liked it. And more is to come in the next Dallas video. Stay tuned for that video because it's gonna get wild. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys live in Dallas, let me know in the comments. Or if you guys have been to Dallas, like what are your thoughts? What is it like living in Dallas? I wanna know. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure to check out Audible. And I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.